Hello, we're looking at a pathology specimen of an enlarged cystic ovary and what we're looking at here is the inner lining or the inner wall of the cyst. Let me just turn the specimen around. So this is the capsular surface or the serosal surface and I want you to observe that the serosal surface is actually very smooth. There is no evidence of any tumour deposits or any masses on the serosal surface. And coming back round to look at the inner lining of the cyst, we can observe that this is a unilocular cyst. There is a single large locule. And I'm just going to zoom in on this area. And we can see it a little bit better at an angle. So here we can see the cyst wall, which is relatively thin. It is a few millimetres thick. But there are these cauliflower-like papillary projections or excrescences that are protruding into the lumen of the cyst. And here again we see them. We don't see any large, solid, fleshy areas, but most of these projections are rather small. And they also don't appear to be invading into the wall of the ovary. This is an example of a serous cystadenoma of the ovary. So here I'm going to describe serous tumours in general, but uh, this picture shows the gross features and microscopic features of a serous cystadenoma. Serous tumours of the ovary are primary ovarian epithelial tumours and they derive from the Mullerian epithelium. There are three major histologic subtypes and they are serous, mucinous and endometrioid. So here we'll be looking at the serous tumours. So it's very important to recognise that there are three grades of these tumours ranging from benign all the way to malignant and these tumours can be unilateral or bilateral. Uh, the malignant tumours tend to have a higher chance of being bilateral. So at the most benign end we have the serous cystadenomas which you can see here and these are lined by ciliated columnar epithelium. So a very bland single layer of epithelium and I will show you this in a minute. We also have the borderline tumours, which show some degree of architectural complexity, for example, uh, more complex papillary structures, and there is also some nucleotypia, but still no stromal invasion. And then at the malignant end, there is the serous carcinoma, or if the tumour is very cystic, the serous cystadenocarcinoma. These have much more marked architectural as well as cytologic or nucleotypia, and also show stromal invasion and these can be recognized grossly by the presence of solid fleshy areas and often invasion through the wall of the ovary and sometimes the serosal surface or in other areas of the peritoneum. And uh, serous carcinomas may be associated with germline BRCA mutations as well. So there may be other tumors that these patients may have including breast tumors for example. Now it's also important to note that borderline tumors also together with carcinoma can have peritoneal involvement and it is often the extent of peritoneal involvement that is very important in the staging and prognosis of these borderline tumours as well as the carcinomas. Let's take a look at the microscopic features of a serous cystadenoma. And these pictures are taken from the online pathology resource PathWeb. We can see these papillary projections are composed of a fibrous core and they are lined by a single layer of epithelium, which we can see here. These are columnar cells and you can actually just make out the cilia. So we have a unilayered ciliated columnar epithelium and there is no significant architectural complexity or atypia and also the nuclei are very bland. We are now going to do a very quick comparison of the gross as well as the microscopic features of benign versus malignant serous tumours. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the gross features of a serous cyst adenoma with relatively small uh, papillary excrescences or projections and no invasion into the cyst wall as opposed to serous cyst adenocarcinoma where you can also still see 
a cyst locule, but these rather fleshy papillary projections, and you can see them actually outside on the serosal surface or capsular surface of the ovary. Microscopically, the serous cyst adenoma, again, we can see a lot of fibrous stroma, and we can see these columnar ciliated cells, which only form a single layer as opposed to the serous cyst adenocarcinoma with these extremely complex papillary formations. And you can see very slender papillae here. And at a high magnification view, there is marked nuclear atypia as well as frequent mitotic figures, as you can see one here. So serous cyst adenomas have a benign clinical cause, whereas, of course, serous cyst adenocarcinomas or serous carcinomas behave in a malignant fashion. So in summary, we have here a unilocular ovarian cyst that is fairly large, about 9 centimeters in maximal dimension, and we can see these fine papillary projections or excrescences in the cyst wall that are projecting into the cyst lumen. There is no evidence of solid fleshy areas or invasion through the wall of the cyst or any evidence of serosal deposits. This is an ovarian serous cyst adenoma. Thank you.